Hey everyone, Aussie Viking here to do another video on Sales Battlefront 2 and leaks. So a leaker known as Battlefront Skin Updates or Skin Leaks has come out with a leak as is of the current state of the game. Now he made a post two days ago regarding upcoming content and he was right in certain aspects. However, things like, oh, uh, Hut Slayer Layer and stuff doesn't feel like it could really fit, but who knows, it's entirely plausible. So it comes out with another part of another leak about the game, and it's kind of interesting. So he says stuff like, you should know that they've completed development on Layers and New Hope skin, but Layer schedule has changed on a weekly basis with internal meetings, fair enough. There's also some content like Drop Pod Mode and a New Hope Luke skin that I say for Rainy Day, which I imagine is, you know, oh, here's a, here's a mode that will be going for a few weeks, and then we'll expand upon it, and oh, you can do this Luke challenge. I like that, I like that a lot. If there's ever a month when content cannot be completed, that's when they will come in. Hut Slayer will be a legendary skin, despite what people on Reddit say. Disney is not against it. They had paintings at Celebration, and Kennedy was at the opening ceremony at a wax museum, which had Slave Layer. Still a bit weird for a Disney game, but entirely plausible at the very least. He's saying that what is happening is that most popular skins are being saved as DICE doesn't want to blow their load at the initial run. Fair enough. Hut Slayer will be a game changer because along with it will be a, a hero ability swapping star card will arrive and the shield is most likely useless in HVV against lots of the heroes. So it can be swapped out for another ability like how the heavy can swap out its shield for a turret. Lazy new ability will be a chain function like Roadhogs is to be a counter of flying Boba or running Maul. A chain is based on Hut Slayer killing Jabba but the star card will be used with other skins as well. Fair enough, I like that. Luke's repulse ability will eventually get an alternate star card as well. There's a debate whether or not that will make the repulse break through blocks. blocks. Kind of hope it does, because to be truthful, Luke isn't as strong as it should be. There are talks of QOF improvements, like heroes in HVV getting buffs when near any ally. That's fair enough. They sort of do that with Kylo's card, where if he's near a hero, he will get a buff, so I kind of like that. Um, Dads want to give benefits to team play in HVV and Galactic Assault. Ewok Hunt was the first deployment of one of those tactics, forcing people to stick together in order to survive. I and that worked very well. Battle point game may be increased, yada yada, so improved gameplay, variety, um, and for people to get heroes. Believe it or not, they do look at the metric systems and metrics and data. Uh, they require either through challenges, which are now going to be turned into hut contracts, or maybe the next half of this uh, update, possibly, or via credits. They will not be available for crystals, which is only for cosmetics, which is fine. The only reason they moved free DLC in the first place was because Overwatch earnings were loot box, which is fair enough. Nowadays, though, they need more money. Um, so this is the idea of free content. So for free content, he says here, $15 of DLC gave you one new game mode, four maps, two new heroes, and a few customization options, new weapons, new vehicles, and new star cards. Kind of, in Australia, it was like $30 for a DLC, um, for a single DLC, I'd like to point out. Um, so I guess if you guys in America got it for $15, good on you. But yeah, I mean, you got, you did get, you did get two heroes, you did get new game modes and stuff, which is good. I kind of get that, and now it's like saying fifteen dollars will get you a skin or two. Because their plan, uh, EA's plan, is to make as much money as possible, which will then use to give us more um, content. Because the idea is that he says here of how things have changed because the loot box scams and stuff. He says that. Um, the loot boxes were used for you guys to basically spend a lot of money to get us so they make more money and then we can keep making content. Um, so it was made so that credits will be drained to encourage purchase of crystals, which is what they're doing now. Going forward, every step will ensure that credits are drained to encourage purchase of crystals. Even milestones will be rebranded as cut contracts that will be brought with credits. I can understand that, and yes, I just like the old game. Buy hut contacts with credits was a fantastic idea, and I'm all for that. I'm gonna spend because here's the thing. I will tell you that later, but here's the thing for most of it all is I'm definitely interested to see how they will fix the scam. More so, they've done a really good job so far. We just need more content, really. The, the plan from the very beginning was to make more money than give the same amount of DLC for free. He says, I know people want to hold out hope, but the focus has shifted to cosmetics and gimmicky modes to pad out content. Old modes will be ported over eventually, like extraction on new maps as well, which is from leaks we've heard, which is fair enough. But he's something interesting. 
The future of this game is uncertain. It's a toss up to how things would go in the coming months. This is why every community transmission is just buying time paying out content. Because he says stuff like, the more money they make, the more content we get, which is fair enough. And he also says stuff like, a lot of stuff like Droidicus, Obi-Wan, Grievous, etc. had been put on the back burner since mid-January. Dennis wasn't lying when he was teasing Clone Wars, which he says here was going to be very early on. Right now, the focus on churning out cosmetics to generate revenue, understandable. If Dice can't show that the game is not profitable, there is no major content creation will be greenlit, period. He says no, now interesting here, he says no major content. We probably still get small content, but big, big content will not be happening. Genosius don't expect a huge falling map with lots of vehicles. They simply do not have the resources for it. Its creation will depend heavily on the sale of upcoming skins at most. Expect Genosius caves for hunt. I like that because it also shows that we're going to get hunt. Genosius hunt. We're going to get the ability to play um, um, Genosians in hunt. And I'm, that actually excites me. Dice will be reusing old maps in new ways for gimmicky modes while concentrating on cosmetics. Expert racing, hunt, drop pod, drop run, and droid run. Expert racing interests me. Hunt drop pod, uh, hunt is already a great game mode, so I'm alright with that. Drop pod was in the first game, and droid run was also in the first game. Fair enough. There'll be one tweet mode every month, along with two to three skins with some balance updates. Heroes will start to receive star cards for replacing abilities. Fair enough. The reason there's no roadmap is because nothing has been greenlit and there's not much funding. Dice is on proving ground right now. If the microtransactions hadn't happened, Obi-Wan and Grievous would have arrived in February, March with Solo in June and Padme and Django Genosius in August. There are some half completed assets, but honestly, everything is limbo right now and Dice is trying to buy time. So, with the fiasco of loot boxes, we, were, we would have gotten content that we wanted straight up, very early. Although, to be truthful, the one, and that's kind of cool. We would have gone Obi-Wan and, um, and Grievous in March, most likely, Solo in June, and Padme and Django with Genosius in August. Now, that could still happen. Genosius and Padme and all that could still happen in August. Although, I would rather Dooku and Anakin than Padme and Django, although I do want Padme because I do like Padme. Django, he, I mean, I'd like, I mean, here's the thing, I do like Padme and Django, but I would rather Anakin and Dooku first up. Things might change. They might still give us Padme and Django. I don't know. And this is the thing. I said a while ago that I was only going to put $100 down in microtransactions. I've changed that. I'm going to put $50 down, which is the highest you can get for paying for the microtransaction crystals in the game. And I'm going to do that for every season. Now, keep in mind, every main season is two months. So 50 bucks every two months isn't a bad thing. I mean... That's kind of like most people spend 50 bucks on, say, coffees every month. Or hell, even every week if you're a big coffee drinker, if you go out to buy coffees every week. So it's not that big of a deal. And this might sound strange, but I would say buy those microtransactions because you help the community and you help get more content. Because I keep saying this, if we can get an extra year of content for this game from 2019, throughout 2019, we could get everything we want. We can get... Hopefully Anakin and Dooku, we can get more maps, Utapau, Mustafa, and all that. We, 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 can, we can, and I know it's a kind of a push and we have to go like, fuck you EA and stuff. And don't get me wrong, screw EA. EA made a lot of money off this game. More money than most games would even dream of, and they still want more. I understand that, but if I've got hundreds of hours in this game, at least 400 hours. If I can get, if I have to pay extra a few more money to help get more content for an extra year i'm all for it because i keep saying you get if we can get battlefront 2 to keep going to the end of 2019 and you know january 20 um 20 it's like we've stopped work on battlefront 2 we're working on battlefront 3 and it's like we've had battlefront 3 in development since 2017 then battlefront 3 would have had two and a half to three year development time and i keep saying dice needs more than two years development time and that would basically give us, Battlefront 3 would basically give us the game that we all want. And since they would have things and understand things like loot boxes not being in it and probably cosmetic items. And the fact that, hey, bam, we can, uh, we've got a better progression system. Then I think it would sell a lot more and they'd make more money in the long run, which will give us more content. It's just, we have to do this now. We have to really show this, that we can do it. Now, here's the thing. Ben, the community manager, also said things like, you can help, but it's not entirely up to the community. Things have to change within us. 
which I think is Disney and EA. Because EA and Disney, they have to literally look at it and go, they look at it from a business perspective. Are we making more money? We're making some money, but are we making what we want? No. Well, we'll give up on it. However, if DICE goes, look, look, everybody wants this. We just need some few more people, make more content, you can get more money. Then they might be like, okay, if we can get more money and you show that we can get more money, we'll give you the resources. That's more or less how it works. Of course, there's ups and downs and stuff. So, as weird as this might say, buy those skins. The skins they're putting out now are great. And to be truthful, I was alright with the skins we got in the uh, main game. If everyone put like $100 down on microtransactions every month. No, not every month. Every like 3-4 months. They'd have a lot of money. Plus, more people would be coming into the game because of free content and stuff like that. Now, what's interesting too... Is this leaker also said things like new big mode? So there was a big, there was a mode that was said that would be very conquest like, which he said is going to be a tweak supremacy mode that was in the first game, which was somewhat, from what I remember, like conquest. You took over spots, people came to kill you, and you could just keep doing that, which is awesome. But he also says that it will come to online first and then it will come to offline. Um, he says right now that they're focusing on more online content because let's be honest, a lot of people like this game for online, but they shouldn't disregard offline. You give this game a lot of good offline, and I think this is why they're giving us Starfighter Assault offline, um, because people will come in, oh, Starfighter Assault, sweet, bam. Oh, new maps, we'll have a section we can play offline, sweet, bam. That's enough for us for now. Then they can focus on the big ones, because if you give us a good offline for this game, you will be getting a lot of more income. People are literally going to buy this game now because of Starfighter Assault Offline. Because a lot of people like to play offline. But that's the thing, you need to find the right balance of online and offline. Of course, they didn't have enough resources and stuff like that. And hopefully by the end of this year, sometime next year, we can get Supremacy Offline. Or whatever the Tweak Supremacy, I don't even know. If it might not even be called Supremacy. It's just, he just says right here, it'll be a Tweak Supremacy. So it could be called something else. But yeah. So there is some interesting stuff here that I have to say. It's... The game's not dead. Even he says he says stuff like the game's not dead, at all. Players can change. We can change it all. We we can show that we want more in this game, and we can. Forums buying that content will show that we want more content and that we want more. And I absolutely agree. Now I guess it depends on your view. Look, EA are scum. They're absolute scum, and they've learned some lessons with the whole loot box, at least in this sort of game. I think they said they're going to put loot boxes back into NFL or whatever the game is, but I didn't give two shits about soccer games, so I couldn't give a fuck. But here, they've learned. Multiplayer light games, no, 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 no. Stuff like this, shooter games, no, that doesn't make any sense. But microtransactions with skins, which is worth it, is. And to be truthful, I'm all for it, because I do want to buy those skins. I want to give this game money so it can keep going. But that's my thoughts on it all. You might agree, you might disagree, but in the end, think about it like this. The more money that this game makes, the more content we get. And if we get more online, offline, and we get a lot of online for offline, this game could be played like the original Battlefront 2, 10 years plus later. What would you rather do? Spend some more money, have an overall right game, wait for Battlefront 3 to have two years development time, no more, because the, you know how um, DICE and EA tell us what DICE to do. It's like, yeah, you got two years to make Battlefront 3. And then it comes out just like this one. Not enough content, and when we do get content crops, it's small. Or, would you rather help get this game better, which in turn helps get Battlefront 3, in development most likely, a better game. Yeah. Anyway, let's see Viking out. I'll see you in Valhalla. Bye.